Roger. Natan's more dangerous right now. Yeah, the Natan was extremely scary from uh, Mobazane. And just to let everybody know, we did have a roster change on the side of BTK. So they did uh, end up taking Basic out for the semifinals, and they did put Hoi in. So we do have um, just a little bit of a roster change. They are, you know, messing around with their with their Your five men at the moment. And um, yeah, we do see a Lunox ban coming in from the side of BTK. These are just the standard bans you're going to look at, but I feel like, you know, as much as Nathan is just banned, it's, he's a he's an ungodly hero. They also, they saw him. They, they, we, everybody was watching Mobazane on Nathan. You don't want to give it to him. Yeah, you definitely don't want to give it to him. But, you know, back to that roster change, Basic was playing amazing. You know, we saw that Hayabusa support. We saw his versatility. Before that, he went a normal mage. Like, we know Basic could bring that, and we're wondering, can, can, Hoi do the same thing. Is he going to be able to fill that role? And I'm, I'm guessing he can. You know, he's he's a member of BTK. We've seen all of their team definitely come in. But don't call myself too short. They still end up banning the Roger. I mean, the Roger's way. a great pick, but BTK immediately picking. going to take advantage of you using that ban from the Roger by picking up Matilda. Matilda's going to give them some amazing dive potential. Going to be able to get in these tier two, tier three towers, and just pick off off lanes. So with that, we're definitely gonna need to see some nice sustainability on the off lane. Yuna, I'm wondering what he's gonna pick. Yeah, you know, that's the thing when you're going against Mopa Zane is you have to ban out the heroes that he, know and he knows and loves. So in, in return of banning out Roger, what do you leave open? Matilda and first, first pick BTK, they're gonna lock Matilda. We're going to see a response with the Exborg hovering the Minotaur, which would be a very interesting early pick. Picking. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and um, swap and decide to take that Popo Koopa. A much more meta tank. You know, obviously, we love his vision potential that he can just provide for the side of um, of, of our red side. Um, you know, I just... Um, we're going to have to see what BTK is going to uh, play to counterpick this uh, Popo. Yeah, I'm wondering if they're going to go straight into a jungle right now, let Mobazane pick something. Um... We'll see what happens. Brings in that Granger pick like last time when they banned Natan and Roger. We know Granger's going to have some great early game potential, like we've been saying. But real quick, onto the Purple Shoemaker side, you know. Yes, BTK did get the Matilda, but Purple Shoemaker responding with two also very current meta heroes, you know. They brought in, they bring in that Exborg, and they bring in that Popo and Koopa. So we're looking at, you know, honestly, a pretty even matchup as we see it right now. And... Now comes the Your Ling, team and is I have a feeling that Purple Shoemaker is going to play Ling a little bit better than what we saw the last team do. Though, we do have that Farza. Ling, if she can do the job and take out that Farza, Your take out Moba Zane when he needs to, it could make a difference in this game. You know, this is Your the first time a draft has felt as even as it has. And there we go, BTK paying respects and banning that Cogger that, you know, I really felt like we should have seen banned out last game, but nobody decided to pick her. Totally all right. But yeah, look, they have a Ling. They have an Exborg on the side of Purple Shoemaker. They're looking to dive. And locking that Farsa, unfortunately, they're going to be diving on that Your Farsa. So, is you know, we're going to have to see uh, what Farsa can do to, to, to get away from this Exborg ulti, from the Ling ultimate. You know, obviously, she'll have her wings by wings. She is uh, currently selecting that um, that Flicker at the moment. But yeah, just just time will tell what uh, where this Farsa will play. We do see the Esmeralda band over on the side of... Uh, Purple Shoemaker followed by the Ruby. Just trying to ban away some of that, that tanky front line that BTK also needs right now because, you know, Matilda not the best front line. Uh, Granger definitely not. And Barca extremely squishy. So they are going to have to find a strong front line on the side of BTK. And I think that's what they're thinking about. Also, like, who who's left the ban? I know, I think they're going to ban out and just uh, select some mages that Farsa doesn't really play into. Another reason why they banned that Kagura. So. Or another we offlaner. Maybe take out Chow in this ban, possibly. The but they take out another mage, and down picking. goes Eve. Yeah, so, yeah, there, there goes Eve. It, it really looked like they're trying to, they're trying to, um, uh, single out, uh, Apple over here on the side of Purple Shoemaker, just because she's she's one of the best mages in the A, and you have to pay respect to that, you know. So they are if 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 she's not getting her mage in the first three picks, we're gonna go ahead and and just singly ban her out. We've been out Lunox, we've been out Kog, we've been out. I mean, what's really left for her at this moment to play into a Farsa? Potentially Eudora, but she's just gotten nerfed to the ground recently. Oh, we, we're gonna see that same. We're gonna see that same exact support Haya that we saw on the side of BTK earlier, played by Basic, but this time played by Purple Shoemaker. You know, and this is 
this is what I mean by these two teams. Both of these teams play a meta that that is on a different level than the average North American team. They're not scared to do these weird picks that the average player looks at and is like, wait, what are you doing? But we're going to bring this in, and I and I respect that. Uh, and we still can see a nice offlaner coming from Yuna. Fried Chicken looking like he's going to take that Chow pick over here, which honestly may be a good pick. I personally like the Chow pick over the Lapu Lapu, but maybe it's just something Fried Chicken's comfortable with. Oh, looks like why not both is what they're going to say why because they have both? Cardi on Chow. And you know... I like Cardi's show, dude. When we when we got the CM game one, oh my goodness, he was just finding so many picks, it, it was ungodly. So grabbing the Lapu, grabbing the Cho, it, they had enough. They had enough magic damage, so they're they're happy with these two sustainable players, and they're gonna be able to make plays with their players. You know, Cho into into Alice. You know, he can have a he can have a decent lane, and especially once he gets that level four, Alice is gonna have to play under her tower. Yeah, I think both teams. You know. Both teams, though, definitely a nice draft from both sides. Nice bands. I really, one thing I can't say is BTK does a great job at countering. You know, every time they have to deal with that Ling, they immediately bring in someone that can pick him away. You know, they brought in that Chow pick, which will do a great job at taking whoever they need out of the fight. Last time they used Kaja, this time they're using Chow. You know, they know how to pick apart the enemy team. And if they can do that, well, Shoemaker might not stand a chance this game. I mean, it's just the, the, the team play from BTK was something we really haven't seen. But we're going to see it again right now because we're jumping right into the action. Game one of the first semifinals of the NA Community Tournament happening right now. Yeah, this is this is the game that we've been waiting for tonight, you know? This, this is the game that's going to decide on who makes it to the finals. BTK versus Purple Shoemakers. Blood for Thirsty Kings are coming in hot off a nice win. You know, they're warmed up. They're ready to go. Shoemaker sat in a little bit of a lull, but I'm sure they're also ready. It's that aggression that we love to see from BTK. Cho already clearing his wave. Grabbing that level two and going to head towards mid. You know, I, 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 I'm I, starting to like this high epic, man. And I love the fact that we are starting to understand what is truly meta in MPL. And we're implementing it in, in, in NA right now. We know we're showing respect to... To the best of the best who won M, uh, M2 and M1 in the past, and we're going to going to uh, learn from from their metas and, and be be taught what they have to teach us. Yeah, and you know, I love the way that Chow right there. I love the way that uh, Cardi made that rotation of that bush, gave vision, let let Team BTK know where that Link's sitting, and like the average player may have engaged there and may have completely whiffed, but you know he just sat there patiently and then went back to his lane and it just shows you know it shows the patience of these teams it shows the ability to rotate and do their job correctly yeah I mean, their their composure has just been unmatched and we do look like we have some action in the mid lane if we check the map that part is going extremely low and that's a first blood from the side of oh. purple shoemakers a 600 gold lead this is the way you want to start it but there's moba zane the guy we know and love who's going to be answering back maybe make it too <laughs> This is just a storybook read over and over again. You know, it feels like one team is finding the advantage on BTK, but they are two steps ahead because here we go. Lapu popping his ultimate on the x -Borg. x -Borg trying to ultimate out, hitting his purify to run away. And he will be able to run away with his life, but BTK is on the turtle. They just know how to snowball their lead. The turtle stolen! Oh, that's, that's a stolen turtle from Ling! <laughs> Link just comes in there real quick and pops the red tree, so there you go, Shoemakers. That, that's the play they need to find, but you know, it, it feels scary when when something goes right for this Ling and he finds that pick onto the Farsa, and then Moba Zane finds two. You know, they start the turtle, and luckily, um, Ling's able to come in and steal that, but now we just gotta wait and see what BTK has to answer with. Yeah, I mean, but we're seeing that answer back and forth, you know. BTK gets the advantage on the trade-off earlier with Ling, but now Shoemaker's getting the advantage by stealing the turtle and taking a small but beginning of a gold lead. You know, they have a 600 gold lead right now, and now the pressure's on. This is going to be a game here. I know it. You know, the pressure of both teams pushing back on each side as we watch them on the minimap, you know. Both teams not splitting up, keeping their rotations on point, their cores moving together correctly. Overall, you know, I'm, I am excited to see how this gets in the next four or five minutes. This has really been an action-packed three minutes, and, and with a you know, about a 500 gold lead on the side of Shoemakers, they're looking to extend it by uh, taking four of their 
for their heroes and bring it to the bot lane. But BTK is, you know, pretty quick to respond. They've got Farsa down here. Lapu and the Matilda looking to just disengage off this fight. They're not really looking to fight yet. Cardi is waiting in the mid lane, though. He was in the bush. He is going to show himself. So I thought there may have been a play, but he kind of understood that his team was going to get there first, the mid lane. You know, on Shoemaker's side, K, the, the Ling, doing a great job, honestly, of doing what I talk about some of these Lings need to do, taking objectives. He made sure he got that gold crab, and though it's a small objective, it still gives him a slight gold advantage, and he's just moving around the map so well. He just stole some enemy jungle, but this could be something here. Uh, finding a stun through the rock, but we actually have Shoemaker wants to take the fight. Look at the Alice ultimate. Make it one, make it two. Potentially three. Shark going down low. Barton had to wing by oh. wing out. And there goes the export. That's a 3 0 take. Actually, trade one for the export. But that is three kills for the trade of one for Purple Shoemakers. What a way to respond to BTK out of all the teams. Yeah, definitely coming in. You know, they're just taking gold. Look at this ult from Export just coming in out of nowhere from the bot lane, hitting his last insanity onto the onto three members of BTK, dropping them down health. So the rest of Shoemakers, it doesn't matter if Export goes down, the rest of Shoemakers able to come in and just clean it up, man. And this is this is the difference between the teams that they were that both teams have played before. You know, BTK, yeah, won against the last team, but Shoemaker knows how to rotate. They know how to move. They know how to be where they need to. They know how to turn a team fight around. And they know how to take advantage of anyone overextending. BTK, though, will also be able to do the same thing. So like I said at the end of the last game, you know, who's going to do it better? It, it's truly just a, a difference of synergy between these both teams, or both of these teams. You know, when we compare them to, to game one and game two, G2 and, and, and uh, Sussy Baka just really didn't have the synergy that, that uh, Shoemakers and BTK are just able to bring to the playing field at the moment. And you know, it, it, BTK is down 2,000 gold. There's no need to worry yet because these are both, you know, fantastic teams. But they are going to have to start to, to try to, to try to snowball lead into their favor, which we know they know how to do, if any team. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're definitely not behind yet. They have lost their top tower, though. It's going to have a little bit of problems making, letting Chow to be able to rotate. But we'll see. Right now, though, it's looking like BTK is a little bit behind in the rotation. You know, Farz is having to go back. As Shoemakers, though, is starting to control the pace of this game. Like we've seen in past games, you know, BTK staying ahead, keeping the pace. Shoemakers in their previous games staying ahead, keeping the pace. Right now, it's looking like Shoemakers is holding the pace of this game, you know. They're they're able to keep their core together. They're able to get picks. And they're able to do what needs to be done while constantly keeping pressure. Don't speak too soon, though, in the top lane. 100%. We have Cardi finding a finding a nice kill on the Alice. He, he got down a little bit low there, but I mean that's just the scary part about Chose. And you know Alice has to get to that late game for her to have any bit of tankiness. And with that turtle coming up right now, that's not the time to be finding a, finding a death. Here comes the Farsa ultimate onto Nicolette. She is barely going to walk away. That high it's a high mobility. You're not going to be able to to compete with. But Ling's going down low, so if BTK wants to get back into this game, it's time to try to fight for the turtle because you got to understand. Two of their players are, are down half health. You guys have full health cards. You're all pretty much even in gold. This is the time to take a turtle. This will be probably one of our most action packs we get. Actually, Shoemaker's just looking to give it up. I think it's a safer play. They're going to try to look for some mistakes. Chicken going in extremely aggressive here and still is somehow able to walk away. You just got to love. Look at the show ultimate on the link. Link just barely gets the, the, his ultimate off as well to keep himself safe, but Moba Zane diving under the turret and grabs that Alice with that auto attack, following her all the way through her blink. There you go. That's BTK. You know, we just wait for answers. They were down 2,000 gold. Where did that 2,000 gold lead go? It went to the turtle, and it went to the picks that Moba Zane's able to find. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what you see here in this replay, I mean, Ling just getting a little too overextended, getting hit off by Cardi. Luckily, he's able to escape there, and that's what we've been seeing from him. But we missed something. He got picked off. Um, sad we missed it. This could be bad for Shoemakers. You know, they had a nice advantage, but they need to keep it. If they don't, they're going to fall behind very quickly against this Ranger. That wasn't just Ling going down. That was Ling, Hayabusa, and x -Borg. That is not what you're looking for if you're Purple Shoemaker. You've just lost your gold lead, and now BTK is finding three kills. There's the BTK we know. You know, they're, they're, they're constantly looking for some uh, some picks around the map. Looks like we are going to have a little bit of a, of a technical, um, technical difficulty in the game. So we're going to go to a quick pause, but 
at the pace of this game, I mean, I really feel like BTK is starting to snowball. Yeah, BTK is definitely starting to snowball. You know, Granger's, it seems like Granger's starting to do the damage he needs to, and he's starting to pick apart some of Purple Shoemaker's teams, you know? So Purple T Shoemaker, what they're going to need to do here is kind of switch their pace, you know? And that's, they can't keep on doing what they were doing, taking advantage. They need to switch up the pace a little bit and adapt. And that's the difference between, you know, the average team and the pro team. Can you adapt, you know? Obviously, we just saw BTK do it. They were falling behind. They had a 2K gold loss, but they were able to adapt, fall back for a second, then take the next turtle, secure a couple kills, and take the lead again. So, I mean, what we're going to need some Purple Shoemaker is to possibly do the same thing. Will they be able to do it? You know, I guess we'll see. I'm guessing there was a couple issues. You know, Moba Zane asked for a pause. Maybe there was a, maybe a phone died or something. I guess we'll see find out more in just a little bit but yeah you know i i think oh so we we had we have a um an afk at the moment unfortunately but we he, he will be back soon um it it seems like it's just the it's just the draft that they played around you know um it, it really feels like shoemakers is playing around these these dive compositions that they built into they have the ling and they you know and they have this export that they're trying to dive onto that back line of btk but the problem is BTK has these these uh, hero players, you know? Like, they have Cho that can just find that kick onto the Ling that just started the team fight. They have that Farsa that's going to find the stuns and pop the ultimate. That, uh, the insane range on the Farsa ultimate, man. She's just able to find picks from miles away. So, you know, we're really going to have to see how, how this dive comp is going to play into, into BTK's hero comp. Yeah, it's definitely going to be tough, you know? I, wouldn't, I definitely don't want to count Shoemakers out yet. You know, just the fact that, that they've done so well against a team, against an American favorite, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I yeah. think uh, there's definitely opportunity. This game could go either way. It's a small, it's a small goal difference. Of course, they are down a tower right now, but, you know, any point, any point with teams of this caliber, anything can happen. You know, all we need is one mess up. Hopefully... BTK doesn't get too crazy, doesn't start, you know, overextending themselves because they do need to be careful of that Ling. Ling's only got taken out, I think, once this game, you know, and if, if he's able to stay alive in these team fights, get in and out, maybe he'll be able to do the job he needs to. I think they need to start pushing back on some towers, you know, maybe start capturing some more objectives, slow down because they are behind right now and let some of their other heroes build up. They need to let that Alice get to where she needs to be, things like that. Yeah, they do. They do have a really strong late game potential, and I think, yeah, it's just gonna take. It's gonna take a little bit more from the side of Purple Shoemakers, but we don't. We, we, we can't uh, etch them out right now at this moment because they started with a lead against BTK. I mean, that's not easy to do, and it's not yeah. seen. Hasn't been seen this tournament at least. So they started with a lead. They were looking very favored. Obviously, BTK just just. The way they know how to how to you know answer to to being down a thousand gold is just it's it's exceptional. So we're gonna have to see. And actually, it does sound like we are gonna be jumping back into the game um, in a couple of seconds. Here. I'm ready. Let's see what happens here. You know, there was a slight pause, but we are back in the game again. Nothing too major. We'll see what happens here. I'm excited to see how this game goes. BTK has taken just for a quick refresh. Has taken a nice 200 gold lead. Seems like we're asking for another pause here. Like Seems Cardi like Team BTK pause. is definitely having some issues. Um, hopefully they can get this together. I would hate to see a game end like this, you know? Yeah, this is quite unfortunate, but I, I'm, I'm sure the issues will get resolved yeah, rather quickly. You know, the first the first issue was resolved in maybe one to two minutes. You know, maybe it'll just be another minute or two here. They're just probably checking on their connections. You know, maybe he had to restart his phone. You know, we'll find out a little bit more. But, um... Yeah, I mean, it's just we're really going to have to see Shoemaker sort of um, hit their timings. And it's going to take time to hit those timings. And, um, you know, the problem is, like, while they're trying to hit timings, this is the problem about building these late game dive comps is that while you're trying to hit your timings and get to that late game, you have to be keeping up with the pace that BTK is going to bring. And, you know, you can't fall too behind, otherwise that late game means nothing, because your towers are going to be gone, and we've got another Lord knocking at that Nexus door. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens here. It looks like we're going to take a quick break, maybe. It seems like, you know, there's got to be some issues going on with the game. 
my guess it's going to be two minutes. We'll see what happens here. Hopefully things will get solved. You know, it hasn't, there hasn't been any lag issues already. So uh, I'm sure this will be something that can get fixed quickly. We will see you guys after the break. find a way to get back into this game. You know, we were talking about them being, uh, being a late game comp, so they're gonna have to keep up with that pace while not suffering or bleeding too much of a gold lead that be, uh, um, that they're gonna, TPK is gonna be finding. And you know, speaking of finding, uh, Lop was diving onto that, that, uh, Popol and Koopa here, getting them rather low, but he is gonna be able to escape. He's gonna be able to escape that, but we see the potential that BTK has in this, in burst damage. They definitely have a damage lead right now overall, you know? They're definitely, uh, Shoemaker's not wanting to take the fights that they could, not wanting to Blue take any chances and make turtle. this gold lead any worse. I think their best bet right now is to try to keep lane pressure off of themselves, keep minions at, at least in the middle of the map, and maybe even get a, stout, a tower steal here, you know? Maybe use that ling a little bit differently and go for some tower steals here. This looks like, uh... BTK is not going to let that happen, though. Farce was ready and committed the full ultimate to be able to stop that tower. It looks like there's going to be a top wave crashing and taking that uh, tower, though. But I think there's more priorities over towards the other side of the um, other side of the map. But one thing that we didn't mention that just happened between, uh, like a flash between all of our eyes, was Moba Zane took another turtle. It didn't even feel like it, but he took another turtle while we were talking. It, it just yeah. it, he did it so quick. And he was just in the right position at the right time, but it didn't feel like it was going to be a turtle take right there. What was saying is finding these these, these small advantages that EK just just seems to just weld out of out of thin air. Yeah, he does he does such a great job with it. He really does because normally we would be talking about the lane consistently stealing objectives like that because of his ability to move around so fast. But Moba Zane answering, even though he's a marksman, he doesn't have the same ability that Ling has. He's starting to answer back and take the objective he needs to. And with that turtle buff on, it's going to be even harder to deal with him. And this could be bad for Shoemaker. 100%. 100%. We do have Granger just bursting Hayabusa down. So that's going to be a first pick already secured. Um, x -Borg has no passive health, so he is going to go down as well. That is a 2-0 win for BTK. Matilda was able to clean him up with that pr uh, proper burst damage. And you know, when you're going down, Lord's up in 20 seconds. So, uh, BTK, the team that we know, is going to have proper positioning. Nah, Ling has that mobility, so he'll, he'll be yeah. fine. But you know, 10 seconds left on this Lord. They've zoned Ling out. He's going to have to recall to get that energy back. And uh, yeah, I mean, BTK, not only do they win... Uh, take two kills there, they're going to be able to have great work in here. Yeah, that synergy in that last replay. You know, again, start coming in with the perfect stun, and Moba Zane answering back exactly as he should. Yeah, it looks like Alice almost went down there and somehow is able to just get away with her life. But you know what? The members of BTK aren't satisfied with that, so they want more. Look at Chow Pop and the old Banana Popo Koopa on the right. Popo going down extremely low. It's going to be taken out by Matilda. Maybe the answer, yeah, because chose to be answered by the side of Purple Shoemakers, but 
Farsa with another two kills of her own. Kick it! She got deleted though. Maybe a little too overextended. That is gonna be a two for three. I think BTK is still happy. Might have been a little bit of overextension. They got a little too excited. So, um, Link's gonna look to push the power to the because BTK is answering on the other side, and even though X4 is able to pop his ultimate and get them all low, they're able to take his immortality. That's an inhib turtle, turtle, uh, inhib tower down right before the big lord takes. Ling though. Oh wait a minute, Ling's ready. Moba Zane's down low, but oh look at the damage on Moba Zane. Good lord, you know you thought Moba Zane's caught out. No, it's actually Ling that's caught out. Yeah, I mean, but but again, man, Shark. <laughs> These guys are best friends, man. They are attached to the hip. Shark just does not give anyone space to mess with Moba Zane ever. You know, when you think that Moba Zane's about to get taken down time and time again, Shark is there to protect him. That ult just came in such clutch, told that Ling, back off. Don't mess with him, you know? And, it, and now, BTK seems to have the advantage on this Lord. But both teams are up. Will she make her be able to pull Yeah, it really looks like she's be hungry here. Look, we have a 9,000. You may even know it's going down. It doesn't matter because Ranger's just grabbing the Lord and also going to take a pick on the Popo and Koopa. Uh, Cho finding the ultimate on the x Force. Just barely going to be able to walk away. Look at the health bar on him. And uh, we do have Alice popping in, but you know, even if he's on top of five oh heroes, it doesn't God. matter because the first damage from Granger is disgusting. That is a Lord with inhibitor wave crashing on that bot side into their Nexus door. Yeah, I mean. Right now, you know, on all of these sustained heroes, Granger is just tearing them apart. He hasn't given Yuna a chance to get the item. She's or he's one in four right now, and even in that Lord Steel, they're taking Lord and they're still getting kills onto Shoemaker. It's it's just insane. They're, they're they've turned this game that was very even into another domination, and this could be it for Shoemakers on game one. That's the team we know, but how is Link getting caught outside of the base? But Chova finds him. Shark, you're insane! Ling's completely out of this. This is a double Lord Wave, so we have another inhibitor wave crashing down the mid lane. Hard pop the ult, but they gotta get out. They gotta get this hurt up, unfortunately. They were able to wave here, so that is a small win for them. And they do find Lapu. Uh, Hayabusa getting extremely low. Not to get capitalized on, so this is a small win. But it's many wins, oh. or many tiny wins are going to find. There's another one. That's a double kill for Alice. On one, on two. Bye bye, Lapu. Bye bye, Matilda. So there you go. That's a decent trade and a win because they did not lose their mid tower, which they 100% should have there. Yeah, it's definitely not over yet. Could be a, definitely going to be another Lord. I don't think Shoemakers is going to let them take this win without another Lord. As long as, you know, Shoemaker needs to tighten up a little bit. And it seems like Alice has kind of gotten where we need to. We've just seen Jacqueline Hyde, the ex -Borg player, on the side of Shoemakers, lock in that Bloodlust Axe, which is going to make a huge difference for his sustainability. It's going to make a very large difference. He's going to be able to survive a little bit longer, and hopefully Alice will start to be able to survive a little bit longer too, get the CC that she needs to onto them, get those flicker hits in, and start doing a bit more damage. But this could be bad for ex -Borg on the top lane. Yeah, we're gonna have to see. x Force does get found out, unfortunately. So they are gonna be able to trade a turret on the bot side, which is the first bottom tower to go down for Purple Shoemakers. But look, I mean, it's the okay that we know they're answering with one and potentially two because everybody has to recall. This might be a second hit tower going down without even without even a Lord. I had trying his best. He popped the ult in the first wave, but then his problem, dude, because we have another mid wave coming. That's the mid turret down. You know, it's, it's one after another with BTK advantage, but they just find the top. They just clean the top. So this is all of the towers down on the side of Purple Shoemaker. You are down to the, the nitty gritty, just the, the, the final Nexus turret left on the side of Shoemaker, and they're really going to have to siege up. You know, it, it, it's going to take BTK to make mistakes now, which they just really haven't made. You know, something I noticed a little bit earlier, but before that, let's get into this possible final key fight. Have a team fight. It's just gonna be, probably be the final key fight, but look at the out damage. That's insane. The rest is able to take one. So this might be a win for Purple Shoemaker. All oh, the health bars getting low. Uh, Purple Shoemaker's immortality had to go down. They're That's coming one, back. Two, three. That is three. A teammate's down on the side of BTK for zero on purple shoemakers that might be a lord and it's 36 seconds so it's not going to be but that's going to be lord positioning and that's a win that they need in the final hour in the last siege under the last nexus turret they find that win and then alice is starting to feel online now that's that late game potential that she just truly gets into
Yeah, I mean, and Alex is definitely doing some damage. We also saw from the side of BTK earlier. I feel like Farza popped her ultimate a little bit too early. Tried to use it as more of a zone instead of a big team fight move and definitely lost out on that. And if, with that, Shoemaker was then able to immediately engage, get a couple stuns down, get that Alice in the midst of the team fight. Not only that, but they're in the jungle. Inside the jungle is maybe not the greatest place to take a fight right now against Shoemaker. You know, you lose the mobility of your Granger, you lose the mobility of some of your heroes, and you're in a pocket. So, now we're saying that, will Shoemaker be able to steal this Lord possibly? While we're watching the replay, actually Hayabusa ends up going down unfortunately, so this just cues a Lord for BTK. You know, Shoemaker is just like a last ditch effort to try and steal this, but it's not something you want to try and steal because if he dies here, it's just GG's. But and there we go, Farts is able to take the Lord. Now Shoemaker is uh, now in time to see just a 5v4 fight they do not want to take. All the health bars on the side of Purple Shoemaker is going extremely low. They're trying to capitalize on the Farts and not going to be able to find it. This Cho is able to grab onto the Alice. Popo and Koopa is trying to recall on this one. will be able to get that off, but this is going to be a 5v4. Maybe an immortality pop for, for x -Force. He just barely gets away. That's that x now. Here comes the Farts to ult the zone. The enemy split Lord. Here. He's already knocked on oh, the door. This is a charging Lord, and that base is not fully recovered from last fight. So we have to see what happens. Farts is popping her winter crunch, and it's able to barely uh, walk away, but Popol gets found out. Popol's name goes down, but the Lord was crashing the base the entire time. What a way to end game one. <laughs> you know, it was it was very Victory. back and forth, but BTK just, just slowly felt like they were creeping up and grabbing those wins. Yeah, I mean, BTK... Definitely was falling behind in the beginning, but it immediately made a switch. Granger got some of the items he needed to, locked in that penetration, locked in... I mean, just started tearing them apart. You know, tearing apart heroes that you don't normally see him tear apart. When we look at some of these stats, man, we look at his damage over everyone is just 